the torchbearer. Let us challenge our own potential. Let us explore, innovate, create. It is here we serve delicious success stories. It is here we paint reality even more beautiful than dreams. It is here where nature nurtures young minds. After all, education is the best way to build a nation and bring together students from different cultures, backgrounds, and beliefs. Students from 19 different countries are taking pride in building a stronger, committed, and super confident in Enroll now at Alak Prakash Goel, Shimla University. Hi, good morning all. I, Dr. Kuldeep, Dean Academics, on behalf of EP Goel Shimla University, welcome you all to this today's webinar that is on software skills to boost up the engineering job opportunities amid COVID-19. So I am very happy to welcome you all speakers to this today's webinar. We have two speakers, uh, Mr. Rajendra Prasadji, he is head business support at training center services private limited from chennai we welcome you sir we have uh, mr arun ji uh, with brand manager cat cat training center that is services private limited from chennai we welcome you sir to this today's webinars we at tp gurushimla university have students studying from 28 countries and 29 states in india so we have organized and have been organizing series of webinars on various themes, topic, and areas. This is one of the similar webinar which we today organizing for our students and prospective students as well, who are very keen to know about these software skills. Because as we know that it is our dream to have a skill of gradations that is very important to all of us to have an opportunity for the employment, whether you are having your own business or you are getting job in the industry, so it is pertinent to have those kinds of application of skills from time to time. So today we have invited our two speakers in this particular area. So they will enlighten us on this today's webinar. Before uh, I take a uh, uh, lead further and I request to our today's speakers, we have Dr. Ramesh Kumar Chaudhary, our Vice, Vice Chancellor, AP Goel Shimla University, to have some opening remarks. But before that, I would request uh, Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, sir. So uh, today, uh, the sir has already given a, a, a about a, uh, told us about the speakers which are with us. I I also welcome our uh, honourable vice chancellor, sir. Uh, and uh, uh, we are organizing this uh, webinar in association with CAD Center and National Skill Development Corporation of India. Uh, as sir has already told that we are the students of. Uh, 28 countries and 29 states of India and uh, many of our students are with the background of engineering and even the students from the architecture, even the students from the journalism management and uh, also the students of law and uh, hotel management. All these students, they are using the softwares as during this COVID time, we all know that the online work from home culture has been increased because we are not able to be uh, with our colleagues or with our offices daily. So in this scenario, this webinar of software skills to boost up the engineering job opportunities amid COVID-19 has a major role that how these softwares are going to help us in the coming days so that our work is not disturbed and we are able to uh, do the justice with our students as we have already uh, the adage portal with our university on which we are giving the online education. Also, uh, we have given the online 
practicals to our students also but in the coming days uh, we have to see how we can also increase our infrastructure using these softwares so that we we are able to give the efficient and continuous better education to our students uh, let me uh, give a brief introduction of mr rajender naluri uh, mr rajender prasad naluri is head business support of cat center training services private limited he is basically a mechanical engineer he possesses uh, immense expertise in project management concepts and hands on experience in primavera project planner and microsoft project he has good expertise in design concepts and hands on experience working in autocad pre engineering catia solid works stad pro 3d max revit and many more softwares he has over 12 years of teaching experience so we have one another academician with us who is now uh, imparting the software skills not only in india but he is known globally so he has a very good uh, very good uh, and very rich industry experience on execution of all type of design works he is working for cat sense center since 2008 and one of the major thing which i want to highlight is that he has over 45 hours of instructional experience handling training program in car cad ppm space he has also actively involved in technical presentation of various cads and project planning and management software at educational institution and major and big corporate houses not only of india but globally uh, he will be today uh, mainly discussing the topics of need of engineering evolution of engineering product cycle and opportunities post covid 19 for engineers our another speaker he is also our moderator mr arun birathi mr arun birathi is brand manager livewire international business he is an electrical and electronics engineer from anna university uh, an eminent business profit maneuver with keen eye for details remarkably having more than 10 years experience of working with cat center admires people admires him with his training knowledge on electrical products along, along with ample techno commercial personality having incurred strong skills sets for it product as well the topics which he will be covering today is evolution and importance of machine learning and artificial intelligence in various industrial sectors dependencies of cyber security in future gaining momentum with data analysis demand in latest programming and design of it industry so i think both of our speakers are blend of engineering as well as the software skills software skills which our students require in the coming days uh, we have with our honorable vice chancellor before i hand over uh, this uh, webinar proceedings to mr rajender prasad naluri i uh, request my honorable vice chancellor to please uh, say few words on this software skills boost up uh, for engineering job opportunities amid covid 19 Uh, thank you dr anand mohan ji uh, dean engineering and sciences uh, dr kuldeep uh, dean academics uh, dr sunil kumar head of the engineering dr arun chaudhary other esteemed faculty my dear students and the most important sri rajan prasad ji and arun ji from both the cat center uh, ap guwahati simla university extend the warm greetings and welcome to uh, both of you on the webinar uh, rightly you have chosen the software skills uh, for the engineering uh, as we all know that uh, computing and software uh, skills are essential for all of us and none of the society is uh, 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 not uh, attached with the computing whether it is engineering or medical science or fashion technology whatever you are talking Uh, somewhere uh, computing has evolved as essential uh, tools uh, for achieving the goals of the different sectors the second evolving the artificial intelligence and machine learning already uh, the learned speakers are with us i will not like to speak on these things but uh, uh, these are the two evolving tools which has uh, very much in topic and considerations especially 
after the COVID-19 and we are looking a bright future post-COVID-19. Uh, today's topic, the engineering and software skills, I tell you, I, I remember my own experience. Uh, uh, once uh, this, you know, before the Y2K era, when the software uh, industries were growing and uh, affecting every sector of the society. Uh, that time, there was a huge shortage of the software professionals and uh, after that only this CAD and other is the brainchild of those uh, requirement of the uh, skills uh, related with the software engineering and electronics engineering and uh, and uh, mechanical where uh, the designs and other things were automated and uh, different kind of the uh, uh, new skills were coming through which we can do uh, the designing with the help of the software. So I remember the, uh, that uh, software engineering where there was a time when it was uh, led by the mechanical engineers. I am uh, uh, mentioning you, and we remember all the mechanical engineers of IIT and NIT and other engineering colleges were hired and taken by the software firms and taken to the UK. So that was a quite a back time. But now, the really the software skills are required. Whether you are doing forensic science or you are doing the mechanical engineering. The software skill is an essential tool through which you can achieve your goals, uh, whatever you are doing. And that's why you might have uh, seen that across all the program, uh, the, the, these, uh, these has become as a basic uh, courses. And in, uh, in most of the universities, not all of the universities are essentially imparting these educations. And later on also, uh, now the, uh, the medical engineering, you know, has evolved, the medical sciences has evolved. Uh, all pneumatic control systems and all uh, this robotic surgery, these are the software guided. So we are very happy uh, and it's a, it's a right uh, topic and title which you have chosen. I hope this discussion and this webinar will meet its objective. I wish you all the best and again thank you to Rajan Prasadji and Arunji to enlightening the uh, Epigual Simla Universities, uh, the knowledge seekers the research scholars and our student. Thank you to all of you and over to the moderator and uh, the uh, speakers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, uh, the, I request uh, Dr. Rajinder Prasad, please take the lead and enlighten uh, us on this today's webinar, please. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. My sincere gratitude to Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. R.K. Chaudhary, and the whole management of AP Goyal Shimla University. My sincere thanks to Mr. Vishal Sharma, Care Center Partner, who gave me this opportunity to meet and interact with a large number of students during these tough times. As you, as uh, Vice Chancellor rightly said, yes, sir, this is the difficult times. We really have to just uh, look back and see where we are standing, and we have to be ready for the challenges. Yes, this is the most difficult time the whole, whole, whole world is facing, okay? We can say this is the best of a time, or this is the worst of time, depend upon how we are looking at it. When your mind is weak, situation looks like a problem. When your mind is normal, same situation looks like a challenge. When your mind is strong, same situation looks like an opportunity. It depends upon how we are looking, how we are looking or how we are tuning our mind, taking advantage of the situation, especially during this COVID-19. Corona is not something we, we, we want it. It happened to us. It happened to us. Imagine if you are walking in a forest and suddenly a lion comes in front of us. Okay, then we will be having a problem. And imagine we are walking in a forest and suddenly a lion came into, in front of us and this time we have AK-47 with us. This time, lion is having a problem. Corona is the same thing. It happened. It, it, it came in front of us. If you are equipping with ourselves like AK-47, Corona will be having a problem and it will run away. And very soon, we will find Corona situation is the best that happened to us. One third of the people will take the situation as advantage. Two third of the people will blaming the government and blaming the other people of the situation. Okay, even whole world believes in you and you won't believe in yourself, nobody can help you. Other side, 
if nobody believes in you and you started believing yourself nobody can stop you that exactly the scenario at this point of time of corona let us charge ourselves and let put our best foot forward and tell the world that corona is the best thing happened to us so that we uh, learn and we progress ourselves okay with this small uh, opening remarks let me start my uh, today's presentation okay once again i thanks the whole ap a uh, goyal shimla university management for giving me this opportunity so let me start i would like to share my ppt just give me a second please Hope you can able to see my screen. I'm not yet. No. I think I have some issues. Just give me a second, please. Okay, please. Yes, it's now. One minute, sir. Sir, your mobile screen is visible, but the uh, is it the sir? which you would like to share that is not visible. Hello. Yes, it's now visible. Please. Hello. Sir, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Screen is also visible. It's visible. It's visible. Your screen is, is visible, visible now. Catch it up. Your screen is visible, but there is some voice problem. Disconnection is there. Now it stopped. I think you are sharing it from mobile, sir. Might be there is a network problem. Am I audible, sir? Rajendra Prasad ji. Anand sir, can you hear me? Sir, I can hear you. Sir, I can hear you, Kudip sir. I can hear you. Uh, I think screen sharing is not visible. No, no, it's not visible. Okay, so that's why. Right? Uh, I thought there is a problem on my side, but no, it means 
there is a problem of network connectivity on Rajendra ji. So let's wait. I think we should wait for a few. Uh, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, no we can shift to uh, Mr. Arun Birati. I think we we can wait for some time. Yeah. Because he might be sharing. Anyone can anyone connect to him on mobile directly? Because he is not even able to hear us. Hi everyone, uh, this is Arun Pradeep here. Yes yeah, sir, please. Good morning sir. Yeah, good morning, good morning. I'm, try, I'm just trying to reach him on mobile. Okay, yes yeah, sir, no problem, please. Yeah, yes. let me try it from my side. Uh, I think uh, he, he will be starting the session first uh, as uh, we have already scheduled. I, I'll check with them, okay? Kindly hold. Okay, first. no problem. Please, please sir. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Anand, I think uh, you are uh, controlling the session, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just called him. Seems like uh, he is not able to share. He is getting a. Uh, he 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 again. Uh, he can share now. Okay. Okay. Fine. 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 Yes. Right. I think his uh, connection was lost, so he reconnected and rejoined us. So uh, just you need to make him co-host again, I guess. I I'm, I already made him. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> Sir, I asked them to... Yes, sir. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, please. Rajinder ji, you are audible. So, this is... Uh, is my screen is visible? Yes, it's visible. Please continue. Sir, is my screen is visible? All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Actually, it is asking for the permission. That's the delay. All right. So, welcome you back. All right. So, let me start. Thank you for the warm introduction, sir. So, let me start. We are from CAT Center. So, we, I believe there is a, the total crowd is here, engineers. Okay. So, I hope all the, all the students might know this. Okay. We call this is as International Space Station, right? We shortly call it as the ISS, International Space Station, right? So what International Space Station will do? What is the connection between the International Space Station and engineers? Where it is get connected? Anyhow, International Space Station is going to be used only for only the astronauts and the scientists to do their researches, right? Where it is connected with the engineers, what engineers are going to do with this international space station? Before going to answer all these things, let's see uh, some parameters of international space station. A uh, total weight, the total mass of this international space station is of 450,000 to 50,000 kilograms of the weight and the speed station is it is, is moving around 27,006 meters per hour it is rotating at, I mean earth of 27 per hour okay and going the fastest uh, the fastest aircraft 
financing is much and this international space station is moving at 10 kilometers per hour that means it can see a 15 sunrises in a single day it will rotate 50 across Ajendra ji, your screen is not visible. Sir, that's what I'm wondering. Why it is misbehaving like this? I really don't know. Is it visible now, sir? Yes, it's visible now. Please. Okay. I'm really sorry. Yeah, the total cost of this project is 150 billion US dollars. 150 billion US dollar is not a small. small money money is a money it's many countries of total gdp let us understand if something went wrong in this if something went wrong in this whole international space station the total cost will be gone the money is lost though it has to be created by it has to be created by only no one else in this world am i clear it has to be created it has to be developed by our own engineers okay engineers are contributing a lot to this society lot to this universe lot to this world okay and this is the one of the toughest uh, project ever ever made by the engineers okay so this what international space station yes so you should be a proud to be a engineer Rajendra ji your screen is again not visible Rajendra ji can you hear me again the screen is not visible i'm sorry again it is disconnected it seems yes sir yes sir is it not visible now now it's starting sir is it visible now it has started not hello Yes, sir. It's visible. It is visible, sir. Please continue. Am I able, right? Yes, sir. You are audible, and your screen is visible as well. You please continue. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So <laughs> this is 
what the engineers will do. Okay, so all this Arun sir, he is not visible. Arun sir, he is not visible, and uh, even uh, his presentation, uh, his internet connection has, I think, some problems. Arun sir, can I request you? I think uh, you should uh, take a leave, and meanwhile, if his connection is okay, then he again can resume, please. I'm, I'm just, I'm just calling him. I'm just, I'm on Zoom with him. I'm just checking what is his problem. Uh, I'll, I'll ask him to switch over to a, a label network. I believe uh, his network is a problem there. I yeah. think, yeah, I think then you should start, Arun sir. Okay, uh, just he pick just a minute. I'll, I'll just have a talk and I'll come back. Yeah. Okay, please. Anand sir, I think there is no problem on our end relating to network. It is good here. I think it's his problem only. Rajendra ji has lost his connection. Can I request you, please? Yeah, I have a talk with them. Uh, what uh, Mr. Rajendra is telling is like uh, he will try another time. Uh, he doesn't know which, what is the instability from his shy. So if it is not working out, I will start up with my session over here. Yes, sir. I, I think I, I request you, please take this session forward. Oh, okay, okay. Fine, fine then, fine then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a minute. Mm -hmm. I will just share my screen. Okay, so uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, audible. Audible, sir. Okay, fine, fine. So I'll also just share my screen. So uh, thanks for uh, the uh, thank you, management, for a very warm welcome. That was really great. And uh, Mr. Rajendra also had started up uh, pretty well uh, due to some uh, issues. Uh, uh, he'll be he'll be somehow getting back onto it, right? So uh, uh, my special thanks to uh, Shimla University for giving me an uh, opportunity, and uh, I'll be very I'll be very glad uh, on giving this presentation. Uh, and my my presentation majorly it, it talks about. Uh, so uh, can you able to see my screen? Everyone, can you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, it's visible. Yeah, you can continue. Yes. To uh, 
um about about my experience i am with cat center for the past 10 years as uh, mr anand has detailedly told that time so uh, my path with cat center is first i was working with the cat center uh, started my career as a trainer and then now moved to a manager for international business development and uh, heading this uh, department live for this international okay so um meanfully my basic agenda as uh, as already mr uh, uh, dr anand told in the very beginning i'm going to emphasize on the topics of ai uh, machine learning artificial intelligence uh, um data science all these futuristic courses which we are talking about okay so before getting into that before getting emphasizing on the latest technologies on what all the technologies that will be um, happening or that will be the um player of the uh, global market after this corona is is what we are going to discuss as well as so right so livewire has a brand uh, it, it is a, it is a division of cat center i think i'll give a small brief of uh, livewire and what all the courses we have under livewire and how it's been segregated or filtered and then i'll move on to the uh, topics which i'll be emphasizing on on today's session right so as i told you all the future ready courses so what do we mean by that future ready courses so whatever the uh, upcoming latest technology in the global market will definitely get added to a division of cat center which we call it as a live wire okay so some of our associations uh, like what all the credibility the uh, live wire hold uh, as such a division of cat center uh, i'll just go through it might be uh this can this can make create a better picture about where we are going to uh, do our courses from where we are going to get educated from where we are going to get skilled like that right so the first and foremost is the msme it is the micro ministry of micro small and the medium enterprises it's a branch of government i think many of people know it's an apex executive body of formulation and administration of rules and regulations for the industries in india for the big or small industries so we are uh, officially associated with them and uh, they can also support our students in various aspects okay so next comes the nsdc uh, so uh, national skill development corporation i believe some of the uh, professionals from nsdc is also in the session as i heard through uh, dr anand's talk so uh, they aim to promote skill development uh for quality or profit, uh, profit vocational institutions so our courses are are associated with them so uh, next comes the nascom it is the national association of software and service companies it's a trade of association and uh, it's a premium trade on body of commerce and it is the uh what to say what all the latest technological that comes in the industries will be um business process will be outsourced using this industry which we call it as nascom we are associated with them and for our it courses so many of them will definitely know it naelit it is a national institute of electronics and information technology so here it's it's actually the uh, under uh, uh, moe and it which we call it as ministry of electronics and information technology so it is a government of india organization uh, carry out the uh, hrd uh, operations so all, all certificates also carry all our credentials so which also values us over here this is a set council so india's largest and uh, leading certification body we are partnered with them also so uh, some of our authorized technological partners so these are some of the technological partners we have for each technologies which we have on the live wire so blockchain council for the courses we blockchain which we have here people cert is an uh, certification portal which for which we have a technical partner axelos for it real it's a best practice of uh, uh, it industry comptia and ec council is for uh, the upcoming technologies or uh, much needed ethical hacking fine so um, these are some of the credentials which livewire as such hold in itself apart from all other associations we have as cap center as an one so now we just get into the streams in livewire so uh, how in livewire how cap center has four different education brands likewise we have different streams in livewire so uh, let us let us just 
quick run through on all the uh, streams in liveware and poses in liveware uh, so that you will get a complete picture of the brand. Okay. So the first thing is ITIM. So what we have done in liveware is, as you know, in Cat Center, uh, Cat Center majorly focuses on um, mechanical and the civil department. The same way, liveware is a department which completely focuses on electronics electrical, electronic, IT, and computer science students. Also, all the special programs, all the future uh, courses that get, future technology courses that get launched, okay? So in that, ITAM is a stream of liveware where it's, it's completely uh, incorporates all the IT programs. So prioritized or structured for, especially for uh, IT students. Okay, same way software development, all the programming courses which comes day to day will be getting added in software development. Electronic design automation, so prioritizing electronic electronic engineering, that is ECE, uh, major ICE, communication engineering, all these people, for them the courses are uh, prioritized in electronic design automation and industrial automation. So for the electrical engineers, the courses for electrical engineers, will be available under this industrial automation. And at last, special programs. So all the uh, latest technology in the global market or uh, what all the new launches will be available over in this special program. So these are the five um, major streams we have under uh, LiveWire. And what are all the, uh, what are all the, uh, uh, let's say the courses or individual tra uh, training that's, that's available under these brands also are available under these streams okay so as i said in industrial automation we have a course on not electrical so uh, let, uh, let me not uh, uh, let me not um, more focus on or explain into each and every products so i'll give a overview of the i'm giving an overview of the brand so as such uh, i'll just go through a quick run through on the products which we have under this live wire so first is the, the industrial automation. So we have a course on AutoCAD Electrical ETAP. So ETAP is nothing but power system analysis using uh, transient analysis. Okay, so it is, it is one of the simulation uh, software, programmable logic control and supervisory control uh, and data acquisition. So that we have it on different manufacturers, Omron, Siemens, Delta, Honeywell, all these things. Okay, so these are the courses which uh, we have under electronic design automation. So we have, uh, this, this majorly prioritize it for electronic students over here. So microcontroller advanced. So wherever we get a uh, over poly curriculum, mean, uh, um, so whenever we have a over contented for the curriculum, we divide it into two latest technology one, that is level one of microcontroller and advanced microcontroller, we consider it as level two. Okay. So the curriculum as such, it talks about Atmel processor, 8051, 8056, all these things in microcontroller. Advanced microcontroller will have the ARM processor, the robotic processor, all these things will come over there. And the MATLAB, AutoCAD, automatic embedded systems or some other courses under this electronic design automation. And ID infrastructure management, so which actually is booming, uh, I, I should say globally. Okay, so in all the, the in every country, I can see there is a substantial growth of any product under this category, which is IT infrastructure management. Okay, so uh, ethical hacking, cloud computing, network engineering, uh, cyber security analyst. So the latest one we launched here, and which is booming, is this cyber security analyst. I should say, which is also a topic of today's discussion. Uh, moving further, and uh, under software development, we have a lot of courses. So, which, uh, of course, to start with from C. So two, we have uh, C, C++, Java, Advanced Java, Python, Django, and Full Stack Developer Mean Stack. So Full Stack Developer uh, is, is one uh, recent trend uh, which actually um, it's, it's getting getting boomed in the IT market as it incorporates all the uh, department of uh, IT, like let's say front end or back end or designing area, every everywhere programming aspect, everything will be covered in the Full Stack Developer Mean Stack. Mm -hmm. Fine. So uh, here comes the last uh, uh, department or last stream under the which I actually told. 
artificial uh, special programs. So here we have all the courses like uh, artificial intelligence, block learning, blockchain, machine learning, data science, robotic process automation, and also we keep adding courses more and more to the special programs as and when there is a growth in the market. There has been a launch in the market. Okay. So also we have courses on. Um, MIS Pro, which is Management Information System Pro, so which is also a very basic uh, required for data science. So as you can see, we are working on data science, data science using R, Python, and also data science using Tableau. Okay, so these are all just a run through about the brand and the process, just to uh, just for you to grasp an understanding about what is liveware and what all the courses we have. So getting into today's discussion, so uh, the the evolution uh, evolution of technologies okay so uh, this is the major uh, uh, talk of the day um, of my session particularly so uh, I, I just want to confirm am i audible and my screen is visible just once yes you are audible sir screen is visible as well thank you thank you uh, dr kuldeep thank you thank please you. continue yeah, sure. So, because as we get into the major aspect of today's discussion, that's the evolution of technologies. So, talking about evolution of technologies, so you, you don't need to go back uh, years and years together. You don't need to go back just a decade back. Okay, you are talking about 2010. So, what we are at 2010 and what we are today is 2020 is, is completely a, a, a shift. It's I, I can call it as a uh, a complete shift or jump from the technology. So whatever we did, whatever the technology we used at 2010 is completely, let's say when, when computers started that we had a uh, uh, hard disk, uh, um, let's not go very old as it told, uh, very, very uh, uh, backstage. You, I'm talking about 10 years earlier. Do, can, I, can we see a SATA cable now? Can we see a hard disk of 25 GB now? Even a mobile now nowadays carries 128 GB. So, See the rate at which we are uh, pursuing the market. See the rate at which we are growing as in technologies. Okay, so still more a lot of technologies are there for which we we actually uh, can't able to grow that individual technology. The reason being is lack of particular engineers for the respective field. So this is a very 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 big point to be noted. We have a lot of uh, opportunities uh, for all the growing technologies, but at the same time, we have a lack of engineers on the same thing. Okay, so we may be we may be completing our engineering with all the uh, skills that's required for an engineer, but what is the major stream that you are going to work on? What is the major uh, workspace that you are going to? That that is a big question mark here. Okay, so let us see some of uh, other uh, some of the future courses uh, which are much requiring uh, or which is which is requiring engineers, which is requiring people. Or I can also say these these are the talk of the market today. Okay, fine. So as I told uh, already, so now we'll we'll just see or we'll just get into um, what is the evolution or what is the importance of machine learning and artificial intelligence in various industries so i think uh, i think uh, definitely this is a talk of uh, talk of uh, how i can say why because uh, when uh, our honorable vice president uh, he addressed uh, at the start he was telling uh, uh, machine learning and ai okay so what what happens is everybody creates that focus on ml and ai ml and ai but what exactly ml and ai so how many of us have joined a course or did a course on multi uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence or how many of us completely know what is it in machine learning and artificial intelligence right so i'll just i'll just take you through an understanding of where we are okay okay so you just you just can see here so i'm just going to uh, directly getting into uh, the application of those things So can you able to see my uh, video? Yes, it's visible. Yeah. Okay. So you, it's it's just an, I think you can able to understand it's an uh, automated driving. Okay. So it's an autopilot car using a concept. Okay. So how how it's how it's actually working? 
So what is the real engineering behind it? How many engineers are required behind it? What are the job opportunities we have behind it? Okay, so here in the first screen, you are just seeing that it's playing over here. But check on this, what are the detailed information that it collects? How many sensors are working at the back? How many programmers are working at the back? We need a neural language programming. We need a sensors uh, with weather conditions. We need sensors to identify what is on the road. What obstacle is that? Is that in water? Is that in a hump? Or you know, on the left side, we have some uh, grasses or where do the lane goes? Everything. So if you can, if you can see here, the detailed video as such, I'm playing on the right side. If you can see, just just check here. It is it is actually checking what all the process is required over here. So the road is controlled. Uh, sorry, con uh, constrained. It is a wet road. We need its blanket area. So it detects all the objects. It processes all the objects. So we need an embedded engineer. We need a uh, programmer who can do programming in. Uh, uh, machine learning, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, apply the concepts of artificial intelligence. So this this is an best understanding of where we stand now as in the technology. Okay, so ML and DA, machine learning and artificial intelligence is how much required for us to evolve in the future. Okay, and also you you think of it. it we have just seen a one minute video. Uh, where a car was riding and what all the program inside it. But the real engineering inside that is really tedious. Okay, the where we require all machine learning engineers and engineers who can understand artificial intelligence, not just an overview, we need a deep learning engineer who has pursued a complete uh, course on artificial intelligence, I could say that way, right? So now actually Google team and Waymo with Trow making self-driving car for Uber. Uber is actually uh, planning to go for a self-driving uh, self car. Uh, it is actually in a beta version that's in a testing version. So they Google team and Waymo, they are helping them to come, come out with these kind of technologies. Okay, fine. Uh, I, I can I can see a lot of uh, um, hello. Yes, sir. Please continue. Sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was I was just seeing a lot of uh, uh, commands uh, popping up. So uh, I'll I'll definitely answer your questions. You can just uh, uh, drop all your. Um, uh, Whatever the questions you have or whatever the clarifications you require, you can add it in your uh, chat window. I think at the end of the session, I'll definitely answer the, answer the those things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And see, uh, this is this is also an uh, and, uh, what to say then. And 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 very much. Uh, can you see the uh, can, can you see the picture? Yes, it's visible. Okay. So uh, actually, uh, Alibaba's new AI system can detect coronavirus in seconds. Okay. Can you can you really able to uh, um, accept it? But it's a real fact. Okay. You can you can you can either Google everything and check also. Okay. So these are this is the efficiency at which we are with the technologies, but there is a lack or there is a skill gap lying between uh, college or uh, students and the industry, which is which is this much technology oriented. Okay, so think of if, if we have enough resource, uh, who knows this concept? Okay, who already knows how to detect coronavirus using a system? Do you think will uh, will we be in this pandemic situation now? Definitely not. Okay, definitely not. If we have a resource, if we have people or if we have people, those who can research on these things still more, we could definitely come up with a very possible uh, solution or very much possible way to um, 
know, fight with this coronavirus. Okay. Same way, uh, there is an artificial. So here, how does this artificial intelligence work, or what does it play inside? All these things. Definitely, I'll get into a slide of it in the next slide. But definitely, it's not a uh, place where I can get into uh, completely into it. Okay. Fine. So the next article talks about the artificial intelligence that translates thoughts into text using brain implement implanter. So you need not talk, okay? You need not talk. You just think. You just think, and it automatically converts your thinking into a text. So isn't that beautiful? <laughs> so these these this is where we are as a technology, but the resources as such, people those who are working for this, people those who know this concept behind uh, in a deep learning way is very much less with us right okay so moving further so uh, these are uh, some of the uh, few more technologies that actually uh, ai is being also used so rpa so rpa uh, how many of you heard of sorry yeah rpa so uh, we call it as robotic process automation okay so I'll I'll just uh, put uh, I'll just put my light on uh, these topics over here or the technologies uh, that is uh, applications of AI. Okay, so these everything listed here are an application of artificial intelligence. So just just to emphasize on the topic and also to uh, to let you know the openings or all the um, place where exactly engineers are required. I'll just uh, I'll just go deep into these topics over here. So as I told, RPA, it's a robotic process automation. As the name says, robotic automates a lot of process over here. So it it, it means that A is implemented over here through our, uh, to a robot. Okay, and you have to clearly understand A is to support human and not to replace human and their work. Okay, it it refers to tweaking of human works in industry. By automating the process that are most probably the same. Uh, now, actually, RPA and artificial intelligence can take care of customers, serving, accounting, financial services, healthcare industry, human resources, supply chain management, and a lot more. So, which are let's say which are uh, which are not non-engineering jobs. I can I can actually give, put out, put on uh, in that way. Which are non-engineering jobs. Every work can be taken off through this robotic process automation. So next comes this text analysis and uh, NLP. It actually focuses on the interaction between human and computer via machine learning, and it's been used in security systems. A lot of companies are migrating to it for security reasons. So they should have this security reasons. So uh, to ensure the security, they are, they are just getting into this. Uh, text analysis and NLP using artificial intelligence. Okay, so next is the biometric. Okay, so uh, I think uh, biometric uh, everyone would have known about. It's a it's a fingerprint uh, detection. So uh, also face detections are coming up. Okay, it is it is actually a recognition of your complete body and also the structures. I can say. Okay, so along with our imprints. So there, in biometric, we can use this artificial intelligence. Like uh, it, it still goes in depth. It is actually a depth of topic. So what do we do with biometrics of them? So once they get in uh, access, get access to one place, what they do in there, how they are working in that place, all these things can be clearly seen over there. Okay, and cyber defense, of course, the uh, another main topic which we are going to uh, talk today. It's a trending and important technology of AI, and it is very important to secure system and data to mitigate attack of systems and its data. Okay, so uh, um, to to mitigate our uh, data security, whatever the data we have to to resolve the problems with that, we are getting into it. And uh, this cyber defense usually refers to finding out suspicious uses of system and data. Uh, which means that let's say you have a, a you uh, let's say uh, myself, uh, Mr. Arun. Whenever he comes to the office, whenever he accesses the system, he will access in this way. We so it will automatically record a pattern how Arun uses a system, how Mr. Rajendra uses a system, so how Mr. Anand uses a system, how Dr. Anand uses a system. Likewise, everything will be recorded. 
Okay, so let's say if uh, I'm getting into Mr. Rajendra system and I am working in a different way over there, so it will it will automatically identify and send a notification that uh, Arun is not sorry, Mr. Rajendra is not accessing the system. By the way, it works. I'm telling this. Someone else is trying to penetrate your system. So like, these this is where we are. Okay, so this is what we can call it as a cyber defense. And uh, now now our uh, AI is getting into decision management and all. Okay, is that so exciting? So AI, AI actually have a cap capability to adhere all the logics from the humans by their interaction with the system, and also it adds values or adds inputs and logics to the decision making skills of which goes further over time. Okay, so you keep on working on uh, a, a specific operation. So how you make a decision? What all the aspects you check over it? Okay, so those things can be identified. So whenever we talk about AI, it is about the data we have. So whatever the data we get collected. So that's what I told. Going further over time, definitely it's going to be a very accurate system over there. Okay. So next we have here is the um, marketing automation. So even the marketing, they are just automating it. Okay. So even the marketing, they are going to. So what everyone will be a uh, uh, very much uh, uh, excl exclamatory situation like what in marketing we are going to uh, uh, admit okay so it's it's much required for any company and if, if they can do right marketing definitely they can reach heights so automating it makes this work very much simpler and by self adopting artificial intelligence will be more productive and where all it can be applied it can be applied on campaign management customer data integration, automated customer segmentation, and definitely uh, campaign management. Let's say when you talk about campaign management, um, we need to we need to daily go, let's say I'm running a campaign. Let's say I have a session today. Simla University is conducting a session next week, and you are running a campaign for that. So based on the impressions and the clicks, the adjustment in the um, finance has to be done. Let's suppose if everything has been automated, think of how quick it will be. Okay, so that is where we are planning to do this, right? So next is industrial IoT. So industrial IoT, uh, as you know, there is not a difference between uh, not a lot of difference between IoT and IIoT. IoT when you use for household appliances, IIoT is when you use for industrial oriented things. Okay, so this is a major difference between. IoT and IIoT. So it is the application of uh, artificial intelligence is much required in uh, IoT also. So in IoT also, it will be required. Um, A A concepts are required to proceed further. Okay. Just excuse me. <laughs> So next comes the augmented reality. So augmented reality and uh, virtual agent is actually um, virtual agent. I think you could have experienced in a lot of places where actually uh, while ordering food, when you book a flight ticket, in all these places you could have seen this virtual agent where they will be reliably responding to you with all the inputs that you will be requiring. Okay, so that works on complete AI. Yeah, that is an artificial intelligence over there. Okay. And next is the augmented reality. So it's an interactive experience of real world. So in real world environment, like when an object exists in real world or perceptual. Okay, it, it is actually superimposes on a computer generated image in user's view of real world. That means that uh, when, when user sees that augmented reality, it will be a, like a real world object that is going to be displayed over there. Okay. So it, it is actually a composite view of what is really happening and uh, moving further with this augmented reality in the future, definitely it's going to uh, rock the show. Okay. So, uh, so still I can, I can go in depth means I can keep on uh, carrying this session for the day long and uh, I'll, I'll just put light on, uh, I'll just give a note on what are the other sectors that it's been used. Uh, so artificial intelligence and uh, various uh, sectors it's been utilized by stock markets, manufacturing industries, healthcare segments for diagnosis. Okay, so now people are diagnosing. So this diagnosis, uh, I could have added up in data science. Why? Because it requires the past data. 
so it requires past, past data much okay it is not just a normal data we are talking about it is i am talking about years of years with the data right and then e commerce education insurance smart home home devices digital securities defenses you can you can keep add on all the all the areas so these are some of the prioritized or uh, major sectors which which actually ai and ml changes lot of things okay so that's where uh, we uh, actually told this so apart from this there are a lot more tiny works till space researchers so how mr rajendra has started up with so the space researchers like lot of robots are there which is working on artificial intelligence so that is uh, at the highest category i could say or you, you can also see lot of hotels uh, here in chennai a uh, lot of hotels have started serving in uh, um by using robots uh, in shanghai uh, they they started doing it so a lot of places they started using this so you, you also just think out the the recent big move from uh, nasa i could say elon uh, everyone would have heard about elon musk right so how in his re recent interview i don't know how many have seen his recent interview he 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 is he is that much emphasizing on artificial intelligence and machine learning and the considerable usage of artificial intelligence and machine learning is much in his project over there okay so th i think this this uh, gives a brief about uh, what all the things that we can do with artificial intelligence where all it's required and definitely you can able to you should able to understand what all the job have gaps that we have in all these things okay fine so moving further data analysis so data analysis business analytics uh, uh data binding so all these things uh, what what is all these things what is data what data we are talking about see you, i'll i'll ask you one global question here so how much data is available globally i'm asking okay so how much data do you think that is available globally okay so uh, really it will be a little fascinating for you to check uh, uh, how much data is available for you over there so we are talking about 175 zettabyte somewhere in the next 5 years let's say we are in 2020 let's not go very down also somewhere in 80 okay let us take 80 zettabyte of data okay uh, you know how much is this zettabyte right 1 z zb so i i definitely uh, i like just uh, explain it over here i i definitely think uh, sorry i believe that you know how much is 1 gigabyte that is 1 gb right so 1 gb we call it as uh, 1024 mb right like way it goes 1 zettabyte is 1.1 trillion gigabyte okay 1 zettabyte is 1.1 trillion gb okay i am talking about 1.1 trillion not billion or million it's trillion okay so then think of how much data we have to control okay and also if you can see in that it says clearly among these this much of data only 21 percentage of data is structured data so structured data in sense we need to work on all the other remaining data like trillions and trillions of data we have which we need to segregate okay so think of how much job requirements will be there at this okay so you could you could also see that uh, the statistic says it is to november 2018 okay so even the recent analysis says the same statistics with a minor changes so this this helps us to understand that or what we require in data science or data analysis right you 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 think of the uh, uh where the data stands you no know, one zettabyte is one zettabyte i'm talking about is 1.1 trillion gb then 80 zettabyte into 1.1 trillion somewhere we are talking about uh, uh, 80 trillions right so somewhere 90 trillions gb data we have globally so which has to be organized which has to be structured which has to be taken into respective departments it may be of any department so this this is a global data it, it belongs to all the departments over there okay and how much revenue we are getting from data okay even even you go even in small terms you think of data is very much costly i could say so the revenue so the revenue we see over here is it's it's very big it's it's huge i could say right so this is a graph which clearly states the big data market size revenue forecast for 2011 to 2017 and still we are on track and we are leading the track as as uh, it's been stated 
Okay. Fine. So, what is data analysis? Uh, why it is used on uh, for that? Okay. As I told, to understand the uh, the applications and the working principles of data analysis, let me just uh, uh, let, let me just uh, uh, explain these. Uh, let's say some six examples I would have uh, I have taken here. So, consider a situation. Okay, consider a situation. So, um, weather forecast, media and entertainment, healthcare, logistics, travel and tourism, government and law enforcement. So, how this data analysis, or how the data is going to help them on all these aspects? Okay, consider a situation dealing with a natural calamities. Okay, so how does the how does a big data help here? How does a uh, analysis data help here? Big data help here? Well, so it allows users to gather all the information required to predict the weather situation, such as. If you have a sudden change of wind direction or precipitation with respect to the previous weather reports, or any changes that happens naturally, the data will be collected, and then it will be easier for us to spot a trend or to identify what is going to happen by analyzing with the previous data. And a lot of weather prediction engineers, uh, like predictive method analysis, or a lot of weather prediction engine also works on this analysis, but it predicts the weather of every region across the world for any given time. Okay, so such a tool we have over here, so that we can clearly identify the natural calamity which is going to uh, uh, attack us. Okay, being it, uh, let's say, a tsunami or change in uh, weather situation or whatever it may be, a huge rain or a low pressure depression, whatever it might be. Okay, it's used, it can be used predominantly here. And what is in the field of media and entertainment? The industry actually is a massive. Okay, it's it's one leveraging big data here can produce sky high results for this media and entertainment. So how it works here? Okay, so uh, let us take a general example for this. No, like uh, have you ever noticed that you come across relevant admit, uh, advertisement in social media sites and in your mailboxes? Well, that is actually all your data based on your search history, based on your data publishers, and based on whatever you are checking it over there. So what happens is they're collecting all the data and that data has been streamlined, that has been processed, given to all the applications or the sites which has been used. And based on that, the reports will be created in every page that you visit. Uh, that you visit. So audience, while purchasing an item from an e-commerce site or while watching videos on an entertainment site, you might have noticed a segment which says uh, recommended list. Okay, that, that will be personalized list which will be made available to you by analyzing all the data such as your previous watches, your previous subscriptions, your like, your comments, whatever. We, we have a separate uh, recommended engine tool that filters and analyze all this data and provides you with a list that would be more interested for you to uh, be a part of it, buy it and be a customer for it. So this is, this is a way by which media and entertainment are, uh, gets benefited out of big data. Same way in uh, uh, healthcare. Um, healthcare, it is it is actually awesome. I could I could say I uh, I could show you some video also related to healthcare. Okay, so in healthcare, big data is widely used to save lives. It, it can save lives. Having available big data for from all the medical researchers, and it's been done very effectively with the pre previous uh, records of medical history. Everything put together, we can analyze what exactly is the problem. They performed even surgeries. A lot of surgeries have been performed, and uh, by analyzing all the previous medical history and new treatments, also also new medicines, everything can be practically founded for any disease based on the previous records that we have. Over in time, the accuracy keeps increasing. Right. So there are cases where one medication need not to be ineffective. That can easily be predictive. This can easily be predicted also using big data analysis. Okay. So. Uh, Let's say a cancer. Let's say and uh, now have if you have heard coronavirus is actually uh, they are telling it is uh, mutating. Okay, uh, uh, a form of virus which is found in uh, a person A's body is different from a, a person where it is a person B. It is different mutant. So these things, if we can, what the data, if we can save all the data and if we have persons to work on these things, definitely we should have uh, now formulated a way where we can easily uh, eradicate this corona over here. Okay, so logistics, uh, logistics. Uh, before getting into that, uh, uh, I'm still with you people. I just want to confirm. Am I audible? I think you're audible. Audible, sir. Please continue. 
Sure. Okay. Uh, then getting getting on to logistics, I think you know what do you mean by logistics, right? Logistics actually is the process of transportation or storage of goods from one place to another place. So how does big data help here? The most important factor in logistics is the time taken for the products to reach the destination. Okay, you take Amazon or you take uh, whatever the delivery things may be. Okay, everything they works on logistics, right? So if the if the destination if they before reaching the destination it takes years or it takes months to go there. So what will be the thing? Okay, so depending on each and every product, depending on each and every product in the logistics. It will analyze the fastest route, and this analysis is based on various data such as the weather, traffic, the list of orders that you have done, and and whatever. Okay, and it can easily find you the fastest way by which the time will be reduced. Okay, which means that the productivity will be increased. Okay, and the number of anal uh, vehicles. So a lot of things when this gets automated, when data is enough for us there. um let's say this is done there is no need for many trucks to travel in the same direction which we can easily stop and that is a very big esp of this i could say and finish for this okay so we have a very interesting uh, next sector that is travel and tourism everyone will be explained about what we do in travel and tourism sector okay so the global travel and tourism sector is expected to grow in near future by using this big data in a way ahead of what we think Okay, let us look into few of them like uh, hotels. You are booking hotels. You are booking uh, flights. So everything will be based on the seasons. So let's say I want to come to Shimla at a time when it will be pretty cool. Okay, so based on that, my hotels, my flight charges, and here in Chennai, okay, or anywhere in the world, let's say I am traveling from the Middle East. Okay, so when a person travels from Middle East, everything, all the data. So whatever we do in our mobile or whatever we browse. Well, wow. everything is saved and it's been used for some analysis or purposes over here. Okay, so the tourism tourism industry uses all of this data. It uses to anticipate the demand actually and maximize their revenue. So big data is also used by resorts, hotel, and uh, all the all the uh, uh, recreational sectors. This analysis they use to incorporate all the good facilities during the uh, exact time of visiting and all these things. Okay. and government and law enforcement so it is another beautiful uh, sector actually uh, in new york and all uh, they are already have uh, started using this uh, um, what uh, data science and uh, uh, data science and machine learning uh, incorporating these two they started uh, giving this government and law enforcement thing okay so government and law enforcement let's say they already have a rules and if someone bypass the rules they will be caught for or they will be fined okay let's say if he is doing it repeating it again and again oh. <coughs> excuse me <coughs> so he'll be uh, monitored again and again and it will suggest us a new way or new law by which his pro, uh, by which he can be stopped from doing it okay so these kind of analysis and all can be done so which is actually uh, also running in uh, new york as a project they are uh, running in uh, us okay so the, the this is this is about the data analysis sector and i think by explaining by far different vari various industries you could have understood uh, how much it is required see it is not industry oriented data science okay data science is not industry every industry needs data scientist right okay and medical as i told is it is a important one i'll just play a video on medical Okay, you can you can just. Uh, so, how patient is seventy percent of the mass population has no access to reliable, affordable.
so uh, I, uh, i think uh, i think this video can clearly uh, show you how much it is required or how much it is uh, used already in field um, for saving life okay which is actually a very big uh, um they through in this uh, technology i could say okay so uh, quickly moving further uh, i could i could uh, let's take uh, um might be another 20 minutes i'll just finish off my session right okay so uh, I, i i i'll just once again confirm am i audible and uh, is my screen is visible just to ensure the yes sir please continue continue sir good good okay so uh, so if you can just see uh, let's let's actually these two things which whatever i have explained i think you could have got an overview of uh, where we actually stand uh, how big uh, these technologies can do and what all the industries that it can penetrate and by which how the jobs industries can be uh, evolved everything right so next next we will talk about another uh, let's say i could say this as uh, um very big and uh, but still it is lot of lot of things are in uh, um what say um in working model it's not at in working model it's in research model but still whatever that comes here as i as i have clearly stated it, these technologies are shaking the world it's, it's actually shaking the world I, I, it's not the shaking field okay because whatever if if all the thesis or if all the methods that we are trying to do with cyber security uh, comes or uh, uh, gives a good a positive outcome we will definitely be there out of the world somewhere okay so some of the uh, some of the technologies that shakes or uh, that that we need to understand is uh, the five major technologies under cyber security which is actually an a uh, mind blowing technology i could say i i have added a small snippet also by which you can easily understand what it is for okay so context aware behavioral anal- analytics okay so context aware security actually it is the use of supplemental information to improve all the security decisions at the time they are made okay so which which actually results in more accurate security decisions and it it can support dynamically in every environment okay uh, or people having or people bluffing replies or people telling lies on a reply can easily be sorted so is it isn't it nice isn't it a, a very astonishing um, thing over here i'll i'll just run through a small snippet over here a small video over here so you can you, you can just see this see uh, this is actually a general public area okay crowded area and how they think okay how how the, what context they think so it it is actually recorded if you can see here it is actually recorded so uh, leave off all those things just we'll get into the video can you see it is tracking everyone's thinking okay so it is tracking whether whether they are thinking it in a uh, right way or whether they are thinking it in a uh, negative uh, manner or positive manner okay so this is actually what we are talking about context context tech uh, uh, behavior analytics okay so it doesn't seem like uh, uh, so bad we stand is the really uh, astonishing way here so the next next is next generation breach detection okay it is it is actually it's a tool uh, they are automatically upgraded on a frequent basis eliminating all the potential and the security gap when it uh, when it actually prompted or downloaded so this is actually a tool uh, where where it will be like uh, it will know um, when i download a file what what manner i download the file and what basis i download the file so uh, is there potentially a risk i am going to do with that information which i am going to download all these kind of things can be segregated or uh, find it out using this uh, next generation breach detection the same way virtual disp- dispersive networking it's actually pattern that it's actually peer to peer virtual network uh, that enhances all the network communications okay wired wireless uh, including your mobile devices pc servers anything okay it 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 potentially makes so you can ask whether uh, are we not into a secure network now definitely we are into but we are still getting it upgraded by incorporating cyber defense and artificial intelligence over here okay so next comes the smart grid technologies it's a digital infrastructure that sits on top of all existing electrical grid okay so think of when these things comes into picture 
everything will be automated everything will be secured completely okay you can sir, just sit and manage okay so this actually monitor all the grids energy consumption energy generation supposingly there is a hike in energy somewhere okay suddenly we can create a situation for that and we can solve that over there so all these are some of the major uh, uh, things we can discuss about this uh, cyber security or the dependencies of cyber securities we have with the future okay so next uh, we actually have uh, yeah, saml and uh, um, cloud this is a way way forward uh, solution i could say here um it, it actually simplifies all the federator authentication like uh, authorization process everything it will be secured everything it will be automated it will be coupled with cyber security along with artificial intelligence okay so it, it provides a solution to allow your identity provider and service provider to exist separately from each other uh, it's it will be not in a centralized user, user management area okay we, we talk about software as a solution okay so regarding like cloud okay software as a solution is nothing but it is a part of cloud computing okay so separate cyber security defense will be created for each and every people over here and it will be authenticated in a particular manner by using this artificial intelligence concept being it a um, uh, biometric or being it the way we approach over it so whatever the alteration that happens over there okay whenever uh, uh, someone tries to breach my own identity automatically it will be found out okay fine so this is a way ahead of uh, uh, in the future what we think uh, for cyber security over there okay so other major uh, industry which which is actually looking into cyber security are uh, these things like financial services government we could we could actually say all the all the departments so okay? we could actually say all the departments so some of the most penetrating departments which requires the cyber defense or e-commerce defense uh, retail manufacturing healthcare and all these things, right so uh, next so which is uh, uh, getting into uh, major it programming and design technologies so which is the need of the era now right so what all we have talked so far okay being in artificial intelligence machine learning data science so how we are going to work on that okay definitely we need a program to get into all these things so that program is what we tell here as python okay python django full stack development or all i'm actually uh, you could have seen uh, me in my previous presentation what all the programming languages we have but these three are utmost priority i could say python is the first which stands then comes the full stack development and django is an added additive to all those things okay so this technology stack what well, that means which is full stack development uh, represents the collection of technical pieces uh, that actually fix from a web for example let's take uh, instagram instagram requires a database to store an information okay like if i am a user for me it, it requires an information to be stored on the server i i i am sharing some photos it should be there okay uh, i am i am searching something or the let's say full stack developer is usually mean someone who knows the complete collection of technologies needed to build an application anything facebook or instagram or anything okay so let's say we call it as technically talking it is an uh, it considers someone who understands both front end and also the back end the front end is what users see and interact Uh, like html or css or javascript or the gui basically okay the back end is the behind the scene processing which is uh, the storage hub okay we call it as uh, the databases you will find databases server so programming so which which considers node.js sql all these things comes under this full stack engineer actually full stack engineer is a senior role a senior level role played and anyone who is profound of this skill uh, definitely has to get into a lot of other understandings also Uh, project management essentially include this uh, should be included with this uh, full stack development for a better career so definitely we have uh, our courses on uh, project management also might be in a different uh, education brand okay fine so major industries or uh, technologies that is using python so if you can see here data science artificial intelligence machine learning so whatever we have seen now they require a phase where it has to be coded or programmed which for which we use python so python is actually uh, a cross platform programming language you can be used by everyone okay it's not like i, I don't know c i don't know c plus plus i don't know basics of uh, 
um, programming. Yeah, of course, you can do Python, no problem. You can easily do Python. It doesn't have a lot of syntax in it, okay? So these are some of the technologies uh, where Python has been emerged. And uh, so uh, this is the uh, growing trends of Python. Okay, so if you can see here, it started somewhere in the low level and it, 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 reached, it reached the height like anything. Okay, over the period, Python will be Python and Django. Django is nothing but uh, web development of Python is what we call it as Django. So Python and Django will, is going to rule the programming industry and also uh, as of now, uh, um, machine learning and artificial intelligence, everything uses Python. So be it a very uh, required knowledge. Okay, fine. About this full, full stack, uh, apart from the technical skills, a full stack developer should also have a grasp on following innovation techniques. That is global thinking, good communication skills, creativity. See, full stack developer is actually it's a kind of one-stop solution for a career. Uh, when you predominantly have a good experience in IT uh, background, like let one or two years, uh, um, uh, one or two years you have to be back uh, set. And uh, let's say um, this this full stack developer, one who starts with Python, can emerge, move forward with the same profile and gain a good experience, and then he can penetrate into full stack stream and have a great career for that. Okay. So I think I am just closing my session on this note. Okay, uh, might be uh, uh, I, you, the job prospect which which actually I discussed in between is huge over this artificial intelligence, machine learning, Python. Okay, on all these uh, things which I have noted now. Okay, so thank you much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, panel. Uh, all the people over here uh, for uh, for listening in completely. <laughs> I could say in that way. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arunji. It has been a wonderful presentation which you have shown and uh, a very excellent talk you delivered with our audience. So wonderful insight you have given to us. It is really uh, uh, very informative and uh, you know that there is a significance of artificial intelligence. It is not only during uh, this COVID-19 or yeah. pandemic which is going on, but really it has been the need of uh, for last uh, many decades and uh, yes we have seen so many countries are in advanced stage of the ai and machine learning but uh, it is also true that uh, india is uh, having uh, some challenge in this field particularly ai and machine learning where we need to have a lot of uh, learning uh, to take it further and uh, how the young generation is going to take uh, these challenges and they are going to convert these challenging challenges into opportunities. So it has been a wonderful session which you highlighted that uh, a lot of opportunities to learn software skills, whether it is in the area of design, whether it is in the area of AI, or whether it is in the area of machine learning. Or yes, it is also required for every type of industry, whether it's the manufacturing industry, service industry, and you have given a wonderful example on healthcare and education, travel and tourism, and so many robotics. You have also explained very well that robotics designing is design technology is there. So the need is to look into these opportunities and. Have a right kind of uh, mindset to learn all these software skills, and certainly yes, if uh, we are upgrading to our skills to the uh, time which is uh, there to learn. So obviously we will have a lot of opportunities in these areas. So wonderfully, beside your design technologies and uh, other things, you also wonderfully explained uh, the lot of opportunities in the area of advanced computing, artificial intelligence forensic sciences, you also wonderfully, forensic counting there is, everything is having a lot of opportunities to all of us. So hopefully, I also hope that uh, our audience during this session today uh, have great learning from your session. We were also exciting to listen Dr. Rajendra Prasadji, our today's speaker, but due to some network issues on his end, we could not take his presentation. And uh, yes, certainly, but after all, you have taken this lead and uh, you have also added the presentations, whatever he wanted to share with us as well. 
so in all we can say that uh, 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 as the audience and as a prospective generation of students uh, we need to take a lot of learning from such sessions and one of that sessions wonderfully which you explained to us today and presented your deliver your talk excellently so i hope that uh, our audience should uh, take a lesson and uh, this is i opening and brainstorming sessions always usually we have been organizing such webinars at ap golshan university with eminent speakers like you so hopefully our audience has been uh, experienced and they have gained so much experience of learning and a lot of examples which you shown to us so thank you very much i also thank you uh, dr sunil ji uh, dsw organizing this webinar dr varthesh ji and dr anjali ji and our dean of engineering and sciences dr anand mohan ji and our dean mass communication is here with us and uh, yes certainly you have shown that data analytics is very important in uh, media and mass communications and uh, in the travel and tourism industry so we cannot stop such type of learning uh, you can use artificial intelligence machine learning data analytics today in all the fields in all the industry and uh, education as well so thanks a lot for such kind of enlightening uh, giving uh, during this uh, session sir by mr arun ji and uh, uh, i just request to our vice chancellor dr ramesh kumar choudhary sir is with us to please uh, have your concluding remarks and then we will be ending the session after that dr ramesh kumar choudhary sir is with us anand mohan sir so dr anand mohan i i just request you to please just conclude yeah yeah okay okay thank you thank you kuldeep sir thank i you. think uh, yes. most of the things you have uh, already told about today's presentation yes uh, we missed uh, dr rajender prasad maluri we couldn't listen him due to his network issues and we will be catching him some uh, catching him some other day for uh, his uh, uh, presentation i am very thankful to uh, i am very thankful to mr arun birit uh, birit ji for his uh, very good presentation a marvelous presentation on ai machine learning data science and how this ai and machine learning can be used not only in engineering but in e commerce in other areas uh, of uh, in sciences in uh, humanities how we are going to use this so i think this will be beneficial for all our participants who have joined today's uh, webinar and uh, on behalf of ap goel shimla university and uh, as well as the school of technology and uh, engineering i thank each and every one and my special thanks uh, to hus engineering bhartesh ji uh, dr anjali sharma ji for their contribution to this webinar and uh, uh, due to them only we were able to listen to such eminent personalities today thank you so much and uh, hope for your cooperate uh, hope you hope our cooperation will not end here uh, with this uh, ad center we will be connecting in future also for uh, our upgradation of different softwares in our university thank you very much sir thank you arun sir thank you sir. thank you thank you sir thank you all the participants and specifically school of engineering and sciences for wonderful organization of this webinar under the leadership of dr anjit and uh, i have seen a maximum number of participants from uh, all the students and prospective students so yes really it has been a very good organizing webinar skills and which you have shown your capability for uh, having the enlightenment on such type of topics with eminent speakers so again i thank you all for organizing this webinar successfully dr sunil ji dr anjali ji dr ramesh sir dr bartesh ji and uh, dr anand mohan ji the engineering thank you thank you all thank you arun ji thank you rajendra ji uh, we could not listen dr rajendra ji due to uh, some network issue today but yes dr anand ji telling us that uh, might be in couple of weeks next week we are going to organize similar webinar and where we have invitation to the rajendra ji so thank you so much thank you all the participants thank you, thank for you. having a great learning from this session please thank you thank you all thank you sir thanks a lot bye bye